Hey everybody, welcome back to Mike's Wooden Things and Stuff, and welcome to, what am I doing today? <laughs> Why did you start the camera before you knew what you were going to say? Uh, okay, well we're going to, we're in the thick of getting ready for markets again still. Uh, Christmas market season, I did a bunch of charcuterie boards, so now I want to make some boxes. Uh, just little sort of four inch, maybe, depending on the size of scraps of wood that I find laying around the shop. Uh, just little boxes for people to put necklaces and uh, knickknacks and patty wax and dog bones in. Uh, so, in order to do that more efficiently, we're going to do something that I have wanted to do for quite a while, and that is make a cross-cut miter sled. So, let's get doing that so that I can be more efficient at making boxes and get a bunch of those churned out uh, before my market in a couple of weeks. So, cross-cut Miter sled, day, and then maybe some boxes after that if I can get the thing made that makes the boxes, that makes it so that I can make the boxes. <laughs> Woo, here we go. So we go over to the storage of scrap wood bits and uh, find some bits of sheet good that'll uh, look like they'll work for the sled. Found a half inch piece of Baltic birch for the bottom and a piece of three quarter that I could rip in uh, half and laminate together to make the main fence that the stuff's gonna ride against so that it's nice and flat and square and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, get the three quarter ripped, get it glued together. There's There was a slight bow in it, so I glued the bows together. If you can see, it's a cupped in the middle there, so glue those together to drag them both flat and clamp it together against my workbench so that it, it'll come out nice and flat. Then I found this old piece of oak coffee table <laughs> that was just about the right size for the runners so I just planed that down nice and slow until it fit nice and snug in the uh, in the runner slots. What are those called? Miter slots, that's what they're called. Uh, and then I ripped a couple of quarter inch or so strips off of it, put some washers in the slots to raise them up above the surface. Little bit of glue so that it didn't squidge out all over the top of my table saw and make rust spots later. And then we glue the base down to the runners. Added a couple of screws. I just used a little half inch, like number six wood screws. Countersunk. I didn't actually probably need to countersink these ones because they're going under the front fence. But, um, you know, overkill, whatever. I wasn't really thinking about that at the time. Um, did a couple more that go under the main fence on the other side, and I think that's all the I just did two screws, I think, in the runners, but um, Then I attached the fence that doesn't actually matter uh, That basically just holds the sled together So that would be the fence that's on the far side of you When you're looking at it pushing it through the saw Then we uh, even up true up the, uh, the fence that's gonna matter the one that's closest to you when you're pushing it through the saw. Um, when I glued the uh, plywood together, I made sure that one of the edges was exposed a little bit in the glue up so that it would ride nice and clean along the fence when I was uh, truing it up in this stage. Cut it to length and then uh, I gave it a little chamfer on the bottom corner so that the sawdust has a place to go. So that would be the inside face the front facing inside face of the sled. Uh, just a nice little chamfer to give the sawdust a place to go um, when I'm making cuts. Then I put my full kerf cross cut blade in the saw because that's the one that I'm going to be using to make miters and stuff. And tilted it to 45 degrees, put the sled on the table and I ran almost all the way through. I've got one screw in one side of the sled at this point and so I can square the fence up to the uh, to the blade using a square and then I put a second screw into the fence where it's approximately square and then I do a couple of test cuts. Um, then it's coming in right at 90 and then when I flip it around, cut another 45, flip the first side over so that it's matching the current 45. Um, and then measured it and it was at 90 degrees bang on so I just screwed the whole rest of it down. I was super surprised actually that it was the first go at it that ended up being 
right on the money. But um, yeah, actually got super lucky. And then once I got the rest of it all screwed in, I did another couple of cuts just to double check that uh, it was coming in where I thought it was coming in. Everything was riding at 90 degrees. Well, it has to ride at 90 degrees to the blade because it's in the slots. Uh, but if the blade isn't at 45 degrees and the sled's at 90 degrees, you don't end up with a 90 degree corner when you do this, which I did. And I was super stoked and actually really lucky. There are lots of videos online to tell you how to fix this if it doesn't work out. So watch those. But this is what worked for me. All right, so there's my uh, mitered crosscut sled. I'm super surprised that it seems to be cutting perfect 45s at a perfect 90, which is what you need to make miters. Uh, on the first shot, I didn't have to tweak anything or anything, but I guess, you know, we won't really know until I make four of them and try to put them together into a box. So it looks like, so far, it looks with just one. It looks like it's uh, it's gonna work, but I'll let you know after I make some boxes, which will be the next thing that comes up on the Mike's Wooden Things and Stuff channel. I almost forgot the name of my own channel. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it was it was quick. It was uh, maybe a couple hours, including waiting for glue to dry. So if you need one of these, go ahead and build it. It's not as uh, complicated as you might think. Thanks for watching. See you next time when I make some boxes with that guy right there, this guy. Oh, there we go. Mighty crosscut sled. It's gonna be good, I think. Good addition to the jig situation in the shop. Anyway, we'll see you next time. I'm gonna make some boxes on this. Bye for now. All right. Mighty crosscut sled. And it's just little too, so it shouldn't take up a whole ton of room in the shop. I'd find some, drill a hole up here someplace and hang it on the wall.